I'ma Bob. Okay, so my boy right here, Jay Yon, is getting a cut. Very interesting client right here. We have a little history, although I've only been here for a short period of time. He had an incident in the shop. I'm not even going to talk about it, but he knows what it is. But anyways, I'm giving him his usual fade. Um, I'm doing a little like a dry washing almost. That's what I call it. Because it's like washing the hair without using a sink. And um, all you need is a little bit of the solution that I made up myself. I made it myself. And a little hot towel to um, clean up the skin. Because um, barbers, we all know, we want our clients to wash their hair and come with um, um, a clean um, canvas so that we could do our artwork. Um, but this client right here is a special client. So um, I made sure I uh, gave him the works and, um, you know, make sure he's well prepared and have a good haircut at the end of the day. Um, so I'm going to air dry it and, um, with the little compressor and, um, get the hair ready for the cut, brush it down, you know, to make the fade smooth as I, um, cut the hair. So, um, let's begin. So I'm using a, um, I'm going to use a, um, a clipper called the Oct. And um, I'm using a triple zero to clean up the, um, you know, the dark spots at the bottom. I'm doing a basic fade, so I'm starting from the bottom and working my way up. Um, since I dry washed his hair with the solution that I made, you can make up your own solution. Or if you want to know what I used, just hit me up under the um, comment section. Make sure you follow Paparazzi Barber. Real underscore barbers 876 and YouTube paparazzi barber and subscribe like share because this is a um lecture tutorial. I do lecture tutorials because everybody do tutorials, but I want to come from a different angle that everybody could relate to, you know, because you have to understand what's going on before you can pick up clippers. So since I prepared the hair. I'm able to clean it up a little bit better because a lot of clients, there it is, a triple zero. A lot of clients don't like to wash their hair and it makes the hair cut a lot more difficult. So now I'm, um, you know, I'm cleaning it up. I'm cleaning it up, um, making sure everything is right and prepared and ready for um, the fade. So... Um, I'm about to um, change the guard. I'm about to put on a number one, a number one, and I'm going to start knocking out the bulk. As you can see, I brushed it, and um, you want to brush the hair in the direction um, that you, you know, you you wanna you wanna you wanna groom the hair. And then cut it in the opposite direction. But you want the hair to lay down as you're fading it. You don't want it to be curled up or going in every different direction. It just makes the hair cut a lot better and cleaner. And when you detail it, it'll come out a lot more um, laid down. The hair will be more laid down. So keep brushing as you go. So I'm just knocking out um, the bulks. And basically just fading out those those lines and stuff like that I only use the triple zero and the one I want to keep it basic and simple but when you're using metal guards as you can see in my other videos with the metal gear cutting you're cutting lightly in certain areas you're not pressing on the on the head too hard because if you press on the head too hard you're actually gonna create another line depending on what guard you use and since I'm using a number one once I get to the top right there at the top of his head I have to be light when I'm fading out the line I could be a little bit more aggressive on the line and push a little bit apply a little bit more pressure so as you can see um, at the bottom of the line I'm flattening the clipper and I'm applying some pressure 
And I'm knocking out that bulk really, really quickly because that's the objective of the fade is you make the lines and you knock out the lines if you want to start from the basics. And we're doing a basic fade right now. I'm not doing anything funny. I'm not doing any tricks. So as you can see right there in the middle of um, that transition, um, I cleaned it up a little bit. But I'm going at the bottom and um, I'm knocking out those bulks. And you also got to use the corner of the blade to um, detail as you're going, like to knock out those little fine parts that you have to take out like individually. It's like jabbing. Yeah? It's like a boxer when he's jabbing at those spots, jabbing at those spots, jabbing at your opponent, which is your client, setting up that knockout punch which is the finale of the cut and you want it to be fresh so you got to keep jabbing 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 at those bulks until you knock them out and then once you knock them out it's going to be clean that's called detailing people i always talk about detailing because detailing is what separates a great cut from a good cut you know um anybody could do a good haircut but not everybody can do a great haircut because it takes patience and it takes, you know, a professional barber to detail all his haircuts, all of them. It takes a certain type of person to sit there and do that for everybody, no matter what they're paying them. So um, barbers, make sure you're in the business of getting clientele. And in order to get clientele, you have to produce the type of work that is consistent. Not one day you lacing and another day you chasing. You understand? Get out that rat race. It's not a rat race. The race is for the swift. It's a long haul in this. That rat race is going to end up, you know, you're going to end up losing in the long run. So train yourself for the endurance. Train yourself for the marathon, not for the sprint. Okay? So um, as you can see, the cut is, you know, it's falling in place. Right now, I'm just detailing, and I'm knocking out those bulks. Uh, what is that I'm using? I'm think I think I went back to the the. Uh, it looked like I'm using the um the one still, you know, or the triple. No, I'm using the triple zero. I'm actually using the triple zero, and I'm just knocking out the corners. Either or, you could do the same thing. You could use the one and do the same thing, and knock out those corners. Is is you know once you corner cutting, you could use anything. All the way up from the four zero all the way up to the one and a quarter. Anything other than a one and a quarter, it doesn't make sense to use the corner unless it's a, like a lot of hair. Which this does don't this don't make sense, you know. So now, um, like I said, I'm I'm gonna keep cutting and cutting and cutting and um until I get to the um the final destination um certain clients of mine that i cut um like i said uh um i treat everybody the same way but it's just some clients you like to give that extra that you know that extra work like an extra product or an extra thing that you want to throw in there because they consistently take care of you this guy is one of those guys he's a real good guy Okay, so um I'm 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 still um cleaning up the fade, cleaning up the fade. Most barbers are done with the fade already. A lot of barbers down here on my island, Jamaica, they're done with this cut. Um they're done fading by now. You know, they're very fast and they give you the type of cut that is um just uh to get by, you know, to get you by. That's why a lot of clients, when they come to my chair, they say, oh, my God, you're so professional. But I don't understand what that means because if I'm just cutting average right now, I'm not even doing full. I'm not even doing a full service. I'm just doing basic haircuts. And they see it as so professional because I move a different way. I'm, I'm, I'm putting on my gloves. I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention to the details. But that's how I trained myself. So this is normal for me. This is my consistency. Professionalism is my consistency. So um, 
right now um i'm using a one that's definitely a one guard i can see it right now and i'm gonna um trim the sides you know it's always loose hair sticking out it's always that piece of hair that's gonna stop you or just ruin your cut when you see it you're just gonna just oh the cut could be perfect but you just see that hair sticking out those are the hairs that i'm working on right now you know so i'm just i'm just chopping and chopping away and chopping away and um i'm trying to make this cut real real nice so um when i did the um dry wash and the, uh with the towel and i wiped them off i was preparing his um line when i wiped his face off so um right now i'm just setting up for the lineup be it that i finished um the fade and i'm just um grooming and grooming and cutting off any kind of hair that'll get in the way of my line because you always have those hairs that want to hang over and sometimes you 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 don't cut those hairs because you're focused on the cut but those hairs are getting away and then you have to use a scissor or you have to use your clipper or whatever way you use to cut the hair so now i'm just um preparing his face cutting down the hairs so when I line it up, it won't be a bulky um, hairline. He want he wanted me to trim it down as well. Um, so now um, I'm thinking about the line and how I'm gonna do it. He told me that he wanted um, two parts: one on the corner of the fade at the top of the line, and another one on the same side, the same way but on the opposite side. So it's just two parts, one on each side, going in the same direction, going in the same direction, and placed in the same spot. Okay, so now um, I'm getting ready to um, line up the um, the um, do the line up. You see my brush? That's actually dye on my brush that's not hair or dirt because a lot of people gonna say oh you got a dirty brush and he's brushing people face with a dirty brush no it's a dye um sometimes i use that brush when i'm dyeing people's hair and the dye is hard to come out of the brush even when i wash it before every cut it still look dark so you know i i, I know it's a lot of people that like to look for things to comment on that's negative so there you go as you can see, I'm um, doing the lineup now, and you see how crispy that's coming out? Just one time over it. That's how I like my clippers to be. My clippers are very nice. I adjust my clippers myself, and I um, groom my blades myself. So, you know, I'm working on something down here so the barbers can come through and um, adjust their blades and stuff like that. And as you can see, I'm cleaning up his face, cleaning up his face. Um, you know, grooming and right now the skin and the hair is ready to be cut off the face because I cleaned up his face pretty nice. So now I'm going to do, um, start, um, lining up the front and, um, there's no enhancements on this cut. Um, like I said, uh, I don't knock enhancements, but I don't praise them either because, before there was enhancements, I was creating something out of nothing and making sure everybody left my chair with a line. I'm a hairline specialist. And if you got a hairline fracture, I can fix that. Ha! Yeah, so, you know, um, so that's where you see what you see where I'm putting the part. This is where he wants the part on both sides in the same spot. Um his hair you know a lot of clients hair grow f funny on one side and on the other most clients hair grow different on both sides one side is always more perfect than the other side if you ask people everybody have a good side for their hairs always one side that's more wavier than the other or some parts just feeling more you know everybody has that or most people have that so um and he has a little part one side i feel like the hair is a little bit darker on the line than the other side but it's not really noticeable only the barber can see that so now um as you can see um i'm grooming that line like i'm cutting all those hairs those hairs that's in the way 
so that when I do the part, it could be, you know, it could stand out. Sometimes you could leave that here if you want that effect. But for this cut, I want to cut those, that part right there. Not too light, but I don't want it too dark to where you see the hair, um, you know, sticking out. And then when you go home and wash it, there's just problems. The part disappears and stuff like that. So you, you, you have to think about that, Bob. It's like when the client go home and wash his hair, will the part still be there? So you have to constantly clean up those hairs around the part, you know? So now um, I'm just grooming it and grooming it and trying to make it sharp. And right here in the front, I'm pushing his hair back so that I could find the line and um, cut the line. And then since I'm on this side, I'm just going to do that side of his mustache, you know. Cut the way how you want to cut, you know. Stop following these people's. I don't even want you to follow my routine. I just want you to learn from me. I'm not here to teach you a certain way. I'm here to lecture you. This is lecture tutorials. Real barber tutorials. I'm here to lecture you into finding your own way. And adding on to your own way so me I'm unorthodox I'm gonna do you are gonna see one video and say damn he's cutting different that's because I felt like doing it that way at that time so it's gonna be times where you feel different don't just get stuck in one routine because it's gonna get boring you want to find new ways how to do new things or to find new ways how to do the same thing find shortcuts Find different clippers. Use what you can that's going to make you entertained and, and like to cut hair. You know? See, um, now I'm doing the other side. And as you can see, the line is coming out pretty sharp. I'm not pushing it back. I'm pushing it just, just you know, it's right. It's perfect. Not pushing and, and, and making it sharp is another skill. That's another skill because a lot of barbers, they push back because either their clipper is not that sharp or they just like to push their hair back to, for the effect. But once you see that part of the skin that's white or lighter than the rest of it, that means it's pushed back a lot. you know. But it could be sharp still and still look good. So it's all based on your clientele and what you do for your clientele. And if they like that, and 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 that's what they come to you for then keep doing what you do i'm not here to tell you what you're doing wrong if you got clientele coming back you're doing something right so now i'm grooming this side i'm grooming this side i'm trimming those loose hairs once again as you can see um a part of the part is a little bit fatter than the other um the back part of it is fatter than the front part, but that's when your razor is going to come in and fix all of those things in the line and make the line stand out and become more crispier. That's the object of the game is crispiness, detailing. You know, this is an art. This is an art. This is not no... Um, I always said barbering is a sport, and it's also art. I'm the first barber... Remember this. I'm the first barber to say hair cutting is a sport. I got a book coming out. Hair cutting is a sport. I never got to drop it in the States because I want to drop it down here on my island. It's already in the books. It's already in the making. And it's my idea. It's already done. So um, hair cutting is definitely a sport. If you look at when you read my book, you I'm going to break it down on why I feel like it's a sport. And and, and, and and we are barber athletes. But it's also an art form because you're actually drawing your art and using your hands and eyes to paint a picture on somebody's head that they came to you with or they gave you an idea of what they want. And if you could perfect it, that's when you're a great artist. So now I'm lining up the hair. And, um, you know, you want to make both sides look the same that's the object of the game and right now I'm taking the um the um my um T liner and um I'm kind of detailing some more with the edge of the uh clipper knocking out some of those little those little um dark spots that the clipper may have missed that that I could 
edge up with the uh, detailer. Not the detailer, with my hero. I call it a hero. Or that's what it's known as. I'm talking about I call it. It's not my clipper. But I'm using a wall hero. I never used to like saying products, but then I realized, you know, whatever. People could see what I'm using. It doesn't even matter. You know, maybe one day these companies will wise up and see who is who and what is what. Because eventually we're going to come up anyways and make our clippers. So it's best that you put us down before we create. But we're going to create anyway. We, we don't need these companies. We're not going to need these companies in the long run um, anyways once we start creating our own clippers. Because that's the goal. But I'm um, using a wall hero. Look at the um the lady in the video. You're gonna see a lot of people in my um videos. You know the shop is um a very narrow shop, so um you it's almost like she was like right next to the he it she was next to him. That's how narrow the shop is. Look, she about to hit me with when I, while I'm using a race. <laughs> but uh, right now I'm making the line even. Because the clipper, sometimes the clipper will make it uneven. So you you, you got to get the razor in there to straighten things out. Um, always use the edge of the blade. You know, or, you know, the corners of the blade um, when you're lining up or when you're detailing. Just like with the clipper. But um, shout out to all the real barbers out there doing their thing. That's a random, you know. So right now, I'm just cleaning up the line. You know, Jay Young, gonna look sharp. You know, this kid is a good kid right here. And um, every time I see him, you know, um, I think, yes, I'm gonna lace him. You know, them clients, you feel good when you see them walking through the door, and then you got them other clients that you hate to see walk through that door. Well, this is a good client. When I see him, I'm gonna lace him. And I laced him, cause I'm a real Bob.